Hello, and thank you for attending our presentation. My name is Amir Regev, and I am the VP of Technology Development at Webit Nano, and I'm honored to be here today. This work is a collaboration between Webit and Silvaco with participation of CEA Leti, developing resistive RAM TCAD model based on RERAM experimental results. In this talk, I will first describe the RERAM basic operating principle. I will then briefly describe the RERAM device experimental and fabrication work and the need for TCAD in technology development process. Then Dr. Goals from Silvaco will present the TCAD model and the simulation results. Among the emerging memory domain, RERAM is undoubtedly the simplest solution with the easiest and cost-effective backend of line integration. Compared to other emerging memory types, such as phase change memory or magnetic RAM, it is made of only fab-friendly materials sandwiched between standard electrodes, and it does not require any specialized manufacturing cost, and it can also be deposited by various deposition techniques. Thanks to its low power consumption, fast switching speed, and scalability, RERAM will play an important role in future memory applications. The RERAM is initially an insulator made by the electric material, silicon oxide in our case, which has a high initial resistivity. By applying a positive voltage on the device, we are creating an oxygen vacancy path between the top and bottom electrodes. This is a one-time event that is called a forming step. After the conductive filament is being formed, we are switching between a low resistive state, LRS, and a high resistive state, HRS, and by that, achieving a known volatility of the memory. The goal of this TICA development work is to perform optimization of the technology development in order to minimize the engineering experimental lots for significant cost saving as well as accelerate the time to market. We want to create a device simulator to be able to predict the electrical thermal behavior and to extract parameter and optimize the characteristic and by that shorten the process development cycle. The devices were produced and characterized by Webit Nano using Leti Mud vehicle manufactured in Leti cleanroom facilities in Grenoble, France. The devices were made in 1T1R configuration integrated in 130 nanometer CMOS process technology. Rear memory dot is shown in the cross section here. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Goes from Silvaco to talk about the Oxra model development. First, I want to provide a microscopic picture of our Oxra model. The model essentially involves two reactions, namely the electroforming reaction and the interface reaction. The electroforming reaction takes place in the oxide and is triggered at high electric fields like during the set or the reset phase. During this reaction, the weak sites decay into oxygen vacancies and oxygen interstitials, where both of them are doubly charged. The oxygen vacancies can capture and emit electrons and remain fixed at the lattice sites. As mentioned before, they are created by the electroforming reaction during the set phase. And if they build a chain of defects, as in the figure on the right hand side, this chain can carry a trap to trap tiling current. This whole process corresponds to the formation of the conductive filament. The oxygen interstitials are negatively charged but mobile. So they move within the oxide according to the polarity of the electric field. If the oxygen interstitials are driven to the top electrode, um, they can bind to an interface trap by a field dependent interface reaction. In the current model, which is referred to as the extended model, the interface reaction also involves a catalyst species. A catalyst is a species that is neither consumed nor created during a reaction. However, it is needed to accelerate the reaction. Now to the chemical processes during the set and reset phase. During the set phase, the electroforming reaction creates oxygen vacancies and oxygen interstitials. While the oxygen vacancies form a conductive filament, the oxygen interstitials are drifted to the top electrode and undergo an interface reaction. Therefore, the oxygen interstitials are not available for the reverse direction of the electroforming reaction and the conductive filament remains stable. During the reset phase, the interface releases oxygen interstitials again and they can recombine with the oxygen vacancies. 
This is associated with the rupture of the conductive filament. Now, I will briefly discuss some details of the model. The model has been implemented into the chemistry module of our device simulator, Wikti device. The chemistry model is quite well designed due to its generic formulation and is of interest for many applications. Furthermore, Wikti device is part of a full ticket simulation flow, which also includes a process simulator, a spy simulator, and a simulation environment. The transport of the oxygen interstitials is described by a continuity equation, which considers the drift and the diffusion of species. Besides the species transport, this equation also accounts for the species reactions, such as the electroforming reaction and the interface reaction. Both reactions also have a field dependence, which can be explained by a configuration coordinate diagram as on the right hand side. According to the applied bias, the energy of the process is raised or lowered and therefore the forward or the reverse reaction becomes dominant. The electron transport through the oxide is due to trap-to-trap -to -trap tunneling and is described by an empirical model called conductive bridge model. It has already been successfully used for CPRIM applications here, however, and has been extended by a temperature-dependent factor, which considers the thermal barriers for the inelastic trap-assisted tunneling. The inelastic tunneling current also causes the self heating of the device, which ultimately results in the current runaway. This thermal effect can be described by the heat flow equation, where the tool heating term is used for the heating due to the trap assisted tunneling. The current runaway requires a device protection using a compliance transistor. This transistor is considered within a mixed mode simulation. Here, the device simulator considers the auction only. However, the device simulation is embedded in a circuit simulation that accounts for the compliance consisted then. Next, we verified the model against the electrical measurements from our partner, Vibit Nano. First, we take a look at the set-reset behavior of an auction device. We can see a comparison of the simulation results and the experimental data on the right-hand side, where the blue curve represents their experiments and the green curve represents the simulation results. The simulations have reproduced the current hysteresis during the set and reset phase. This means that the low and the high resistant current levels agree well with the measurements, and the resistive switching occurs at the correct biases. In the above simulations, the compliance system has prevented the current runaway. Therefore, we have rerun the same simulations, but with a shorted compliance system. As expected, we have obtained a current runaway as shown by the red curve. The device protection is also visible in the recorded temperature during the set reset cycles. During set, the filament is fully formed, which leads to an increase in the current and the temperature. However, this increase is limited due to the compliance transistor. During reset, the increasing temperature heats up the device again. However, as soon as the filament is disrupted, the device cools down immediately. Another important aspect of auction modeling is the data retention. The data retention has been investigated based on the mean time to failure, which is the time until the current falls below a certain threshold. On the right hand side, you see the mean time to failure for the low resistance state as a function of the temperature. The blue curve represents the experimental data, while the green curve shows our auction model. As you can see, the model reproduces realistic retention times. It also shows the correct temperature dependence, which can be seen as the slope in the mean time to failure plot. As such, the model also allows for lifetime extrapolations up to the 10 years limit. All the simulations presented so far are based on the extended model. However, we've also evaluated the simple model that is the model without the catalyst species. The simple model predicts significantly shorter retention times and a weaker temperature dependence. Therefore, the catalyst is required and the simple model has been dismissed. In summary, we have developed a new TCAT model for OXM devices. Our implementation is based on the chemistry module of Victor TCAT. The new model accounts for the important aspects of OXM modeling. It includes the chemical reactions, the species transport, the self-heating, and the current compliance. It's also found to reproduce the essential features such as the current hysteresis, the current runaway, and the data retention. Furthermore, it also gives insight into the microscopic processes behind the resistive switching, and it allows to study the impact of the electroforming reaction, the interface reaction, and the catalyst, and so on. Thank you for your attention.